welcome to part four of the applique tutorial from Shabby Fabrics. Now that we've learned how to make the templates, now we're going to get started on the fun process of actually putting the templates to fabric and getting that edge turned under because we all want the same goal. We're all after the same thing and that's with a nice crisp edge. So when we get ready to start appliqueing, one thing I have all of my students do is get that iron heating up and we spray some of the spray starch either into the cap of the actual top of the spray starch or a bowl as you prefer. And I did that before we got started so it's liquid form and ready to go. It doesn't take too long, just about five to 10 minutes. So I've got my iron heated up. I've got liquid spray starch at this point. And let's start with the main mitten. So in your kit or if you're choosing your own fabrics, this is the really fun part, especially if you use something like this batik. You can really choose where you want this to hit. Now, of course, don't, don't take up too much fabric that you can't get the other mitten out of it in this particular case. But you can really choose where, if I like this area, this transition, which I do, I'm gonna put that here now. So let's just place that in position. And with my iron, Again, starting from the middle out, we'll just iron down. And you don't have to use a sealing iron for this. You could use a regular iron for this process, especially if it's a big shape and this is just not practical. You could certainly use a big iron. Now, before I cut around the shape, I always check the back to make sure there's no bubbles or wrinkles that inadvertently happened while I was ironing. And it looks really smooth and good to me. So now with my large pair of scissors, I will just cut a visual quarter inch all the way around my shape. I don't need to do that quarter inch at the very top because as we talked about before, that edge is not going to be turned under. Now with this little valley right there, I'm just gonna come to that spot for now, right there. We'll talk about how to deal with those valleys because that's one of the harder parts of applique. And if I get inside or outside of that quarter inch, visual quarter inch, it's not a big deal. Everything's gonna work out just fine. So again, I don't need to add that quarter inch because this edge won't be turned under, so I'm just gonna cut eh, close to it, but not too close, and I'm cutting my template. Okay. Now, we can see that this is going to probably be pretty straightforward to turn under. But any place that has a curve, I like to snip in just a little bit with a smaller pair of scissors. I just have a little more control with the smaller scissors. Not real far, but just to make the transition easier. Now in this V here, we're going to clip in, snip in there. I would rather cut less now than cut too deep. So we're just gonna cut that, that and if we need to cut more, we will. So now you're ready to go. And we'll just start with this one and we'll move on to the cuff and the zigzag a little bit later. If you are left-handed, which uh, you know most, I think most people are right-handed, but obviously there's a certain percentage of my husband's left-handed, for example, um, you will be doing things in opposite of me, of course. So if you're right-handed, um, you will have the stiletto actually in your left hand and the stipple brush in your right. So if you are left-handed, this process would be reversed. So since I'm right-handed, the stiletto will be in my left hand and then the brush will be in my right and I'll be controlling the iron with my right hand as well. When we brush on our spray starch, it's really important that you keep the spray starch away from the template because when the template gets wet, it gets weak just like any paper does. Um, right now, in fact, here's this one. It's really strong. I mean, you can hear that, it's really strong. But if I got this wet within um, 10 seconds, 15 seconds, that's gonna weaken and when I pull fabric over the top of it, it's not gonna hold its shape, but it's going to give 
and then my shape that I'm going for is not going to be possible. So when you brush on the spray starch, you don't want to work too far ahead of yourself and you don't want to get your template wet. So you're just brushing the spray starch onto the fabric only. So we'll get this wet. The reason I like this type of brush versus the paint brushes, which is where I started, is the, the paintbrush would just get limp and then every now and again a hair would come off and I'd have to and I'd see that and this brush is fantastic. It even when it's wet as it is now, it's really stiff. So and you have a lot more control. So I like to anchor the piece with my pinky and the bulk of my hand, controlling the piece. Start by brushing on little bit of my spray starch. With my iron, I'm gonna scoop up underneath. You can hear that hot iron, can't you? As it's starting to dry immediately, the spray starch. See those little snips that I made? These little, it's, it's making it a lot easier for me to, to turn that fabric over the shape. If I hadn't cut that, um, it would have a lot more resistance. Now, this is, this is gentle of enough turn that I don't think I need to snip in, but later on, we'll see, I might need to. There might be a resistance that I feel, and in that case, I'll snip. So, the motion is this, it's this. Right to left, right to left, I'm following very closely behind, with the iron. See how that edge is already starting to take shape. Now in a tight turn like this, I'm, notice how I'm almost pulling the fabric downward because I need to almost gather that area to make that tight turn. If I pulled over here, that's not helping me. I need to pull here and bring the fabric together to make that turn. Look at the footprint of the iron, how I can keep reheating this area. Now, obviously we're not done, but let me show you what we've done so far in a pretty short amount of time too. And that's because that iron is so fantastically hot and the footprint is so large that I can work in a large area. So this is that little bit of that tricky area. Pull, 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 follow right behind with the hot iron. Get right in there. And I could probably go a little bit deeper into that V um, but I think I can achieve the same result that I'm looking for on that mitten by not doing that. I don't want to weaken my fabric by going too deep into that. So let's get back into that on the other side here. So we could, we could snip just a little bit deeper, just slightly. This is where the tip of the iron is your friend in a big way. It just gets up in there in that little slot. You can roll the edge over the templates. Now, I know when I went to a recent quilting retreat, there were some ladies that had a little bit of fray check because this is a vulnerable spot. They would put just a little bit of fray check in there, kind of a little bit of a security blanket. I think it's a great idea. Um, I don't have any with me today, but if you're inclined, and you wouldn't put that on there now, once the template is removed and before you applique, just a little drop in there, and that will not wash out if you later do wash the quilt. Fray Check is, is, is a forever type product. Now let's keep carrying on with our mitten here. So again, we're brushing on the spray starch. The motion is right to left. Think of it as come here, come here, come toward me. That's the motion I think of. And I'm pulling very hard against that template because I want that fabric to be crisp over that edge. So 
So you can see in pretty short order, so see that little area is kind of coming back out? No problem. Just get in there again. You can always go back, add just a little bit more spray starch to an area, and just reheat it. The nice thing about these templates, let's say you get done with this and you just don't like the shape. It's no problem. You can take the template back out and just put it right back down. I've been able to re use my templates. I think the most I've ever done when I was making a bunch of holly leaves, I did it 12 times before I had to make a new template. What's great about that is let's say that you are, let's say you're making a quilt with a group or a friend. Um, you could share your templates with a friend and they could make the same quilt. You don't each have to do it. Okay, so here we're coming up almost to the end. And you can see, it's just a process. I've anchored the piece with my left hand, or right hand if you're left-handed, brushing on just a touch of spray starch. I'm anchoring the piece with the kind of the butt of my hand. The motion is come here, come here. I'm right be following right behind with that hot iron. Just a process. Just takes a little bit of practice and you'll be doing, you'll be an expert in no time. My friend Lynn, um, uh, who works here with me at Shabby Fabrics, I kept saying, I've got it, we gotta get together. I'm gonna teach you how to applique. Well, I'd already, I've already filmed this video once before. And so she just went home, she, she brought the kit, the applique kit, went home, and that night uh, practiced, came back the next day with an applique block, and it was just, it was so cool to see that with just a little bit of uh, instruction and practice, she was able to make her first block and it was beautiful. So our first template, our first piece is, is done and look at that. If you have any areas that you wanna tighten up, you can go back. You could go ahead and get that area wet again. Okay, and once you're satisfied, then all you need to do is very gently remove this then I just tuck those edges right back under look how crisp they are can you see that edge it's fantastic it is down and look how cool we picked a really neat area of that fatigue Okay, we're gonna put that right, and I like to just secure those edges one more time. So now that I've got this all nice and ironed down, I'll just put it off to the side. The cuff was really made using the exact same technique, so I went ahead, just for the sake of time, and made that up now so we didn't have to waste time doing that the zigzag trim this part here this is one of the areas that gives uh applicators a little bit of a challenge so i do want to address that with you now how i like to work with those peaks and valleys so let's get started on that get that iron down now the points of applique are what give appliqueurs the most trouble. Sometimes tight turns too. Um, we'll just cut this out. Now you could use your little scissors for this or your big scissors as you prefer. But I'm just getting in there with a slight quarter inch, maybe just a little bit under. Now you've got a choice. These end pieces, we can either tuck in, or as you can see, I might even not tuck that in and actually wrap this portion around my mitten. I do that sometimes just to secure that. So if you can imagine fabric out here, I can either tuck it under and that edge is flush with my mitten, or I leave it long and I actually wrap it behind the mitten. I, it just depends on the situation of the particular project I'm working on. If, let, let, let's say this is a, 
red and this was white. And when I tuck that edge under, I see that red peeking out. I might want to wrap that white around to the back. So you want to reserve that option. And we'll, we'll address that as we get to it when we actually make this together. So these peaks, these valleys, these are the, these are the headache areas. How are we going to deal with these? Well, I'm going to show you. Okay, let's get that fabric out of our way. So we already know right now, I can't turn this edge under without snipping in. So in the valleys, you must snip in. Now try to not snip any closer than a thread or two, two if you can. Cut my seam allowance a little bit wider in some areas. Okay, I think that's going to be enough. I have to do the same in these valleys. Okay. So we'll very methodically start on one side. Up and over. Get up under, get underneath the fabric, bring it over. And we'll turn and get this next side. So you can see, it's just very methodical. It's a process um, that's very doable. It takes a little bit of practice. Some people who are, are right-handed are very right-handed. I, I know <laughs> I'm definitely very right-handed. Um, so it took a little bit of practice to get used to manipulating the stiletto with my left hand, but in no time you'll be, you'll be on your way. So we will just follow this very same process all the way around the shape. I just definitely wanted to show you how we deal with these peaks and these valleys. And then one last side. And then I'll finish up the other side off camera and we'll learn how to put all the pieces together to actually have the shape ready to go onto the background fabric. So there's the side we've done. Look how sharp that edge is. Join me on the next video where we'll take all the pieces that we've now prepared and I'll show you how to actually assemble that, in this particular case, the mitten before we actually transfer that to the background. It's probably a little bit of a different process than you've done before, but join me in the next video and we'll show you how to get that done.